It's the little flat-butted car that was way ahead of its time. It was often found doing donuts with food trays under the back tires and delivered more pizza than any other car ever. <laughs> You little babies have been begging for it, so here you go. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Honda CRX. Thanks to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this episode of Up to Speed. Everybody's got a daily grooming routine, even Nolan. No matter what yours is, whether it's shaving, showering, brushing your teeth, Dollar Shave Club can help you be your best self. It's not just stuff for shaving. I would have no need for this. They also send you shower stuff, hair products, oral care products, and butt wipes. I use those on my face, because I am a butt face. Right now they have this sick offer where you can get their shave, shower, and oral <laughs> starter set each for only five bucks. They sent me all three. Join the club with one of their starter sets for just five bucks. After that, the restock box ships regular size products at a regular price. Get this exclusive deal at Dollar Shave Club slash donut. Just a message from Big Bro. This is a good deal, you should do it. Contrary to what you might think, Honda wasn't always the number two car manufacturer in Japan. Once upon a time, it was number three. Toyota and Nissan were kicking its little butt in the late 70s, but Honda was scrappy and determined to sell more cars. So they launched what were called Verno dealerships in 1978 to sell slightly different Hondas to younger buyers. Kind of like how Toyota had the Scion brand or Nickelodeon had Nick Jr. Their first models were the Prelude, an Integra predecessor called the Quint, and a restyled Civic sedan called the Ballade. Ballad? Ballade. In 1983, Honda had started building F1 engines again after more than a decade of not doing any racy stuff. A lot of people in the company were super into auto racing and wanted to make a sports car, but there wasn't much of a business case for one. The oil crisis was still on everyone's mind and fuel economy was really and important. So the new model for that year ended up being just a moderately kind of sportiest small hatchback with a tiny engine. It launched as the Honda Ballad Sports CRX at Japan's Verno dealers and was built to be a commuter car for dense Japanese and European cities. But lucky for us, the good folks at Honda R&D in America saw its sporty potential. Is it ringing? Yeah, it's ringing. I'm gonna give it two more and then I'm gonna have it. Hey, what's up, Honda, Japan? Yeah, hey, it's uh, Honda America. Uh, we know you weren't gonna give us that CRX, but um, yeah, we were thinking, can we have it anyway? What, why? You didn't want our adorable four passenger Honda City with the Moto Campo scooter in the back. Yeah, I know, man, we really messed that one up. Because of that, we definitely, definitely want the CRX. All right, man, it's on the boat. Okay, I love you, bye. <laughs> what was that? Soon after, the Honda Civic CRX went on sale in the US. It was almost like the engineers at Honda slipped a friendly little Mr. Hyde and Dr. Jekyll clothing through the system for all of us US car dorks. CRX supposedly stood for Civic Renaissance Experimental. <laughs> It was a Civic with the wheelbase shortened to just 86.6 inches. That's just over a foot longer than a Smart for Two's wheelbase, and the same as the tiny 1972 Civic. You know your boy likes small hatchbacks. Call me, show him a picture of my car, it's so cute. It was also ridiculously light, weighing a feathery 1,800 to 1,900 pounds, depending on the trim. That made it a little quicker and more fun to drive than a Civic. Hmm, Civics are already so fun. It was offered in two versions, the 1.3 liter four cylinder making 58 mini tiny baby horses and a 1.5 liter four cylinder making 76 slightly bigger teenage buff horses. They came with a standard five speed manual and generally took 10 to 12 seconds to make their way from zero to 60 miles per hour. In the US, the CRX was a two-seater, but in Japan, CRX came with tiny folding rear seats, which is crazy. Have you ever seen a CRX? There's no room back there. Fuel economy was impressive. Even by today's hybrid standards, drivers easily got 40 to 50 miles per gallon, and some claim to get as much as 70. What? The surprisingly great handling also made up for the lack of speed. The responsive steering was kind of a surprise because the CRX had a torsion beam up front and a beam axle out back. That wasn't the most advanced suspension technology, okay? 
But lightness and short wheelbase do go a long way and the CRX's racing potential was obvious. It lured California-based Honda tuning specialist Jackson Racing into full-time competition, which led them to a bunch of championships across all kinds of series. You've heard of them, because of this car. The special projects department at American Honda Motors wanted in on that too. So they teamed up with Mugen on to build a CRX for the SCCA GT4 class. At the time, Mugen was totally unknown in the States, but they'd been building Formula 2 engines for a while. Honda Corporate did all the suspension tuning while Mugen built out a 1.5 liter engine making 165 horsepower. <laughs> Their CRX won its very first race, and then the 1985 N86 GT4 National Championships. They made the modest little car so good that it won overall at Carlsbad Raceway, even beating the cars in higher GT classes. Not a bad way to introduce Mugen to the American aftermarket. Host note. It is Mugen. Mugen. Not Mugen. Not Mugen. Not Mugen. Mugen. Back to the show. Performance wise, the stock CRX was already almost as good as a popular Golf GTI and it wasn't even trying. It even cost about 1700 bones less than the VW. Car journalists raved about the little Hondas and people were buying them up like hotcakes. <laughs> so what if Honda made a sporty version? It seemed like the obvious thing to do. So in 1985, they launched a CRX with the two letters all of you USD Honda fanboys just gotta have as <laughs> Finally, a little bit mope, baby. JDM and Eurocars got the dual overhead cam 1.6 liter ZC engine making 130 horsepower. It's a great little engine. And American cars didn't. We got a fuel injected version of the old 1.5 liter, this time making 91 horses. <laughs> the SI also got a clever rear sway bar integrated to the beam axle and later it came with some hella 80s style 14 inch phone dial wheels. I think I speak for everyone when I say what is a phone dial? Back in the day, Phones used to be attached to the walls, and before there were even buttons, there was a wheel on it with places for your fingers in it. Wow. Thank you, Steve Job, for everything. So, the situation wasn't quite as good as it could have been, but at least it was better than it was before. The peeps over at Honda were just about to launch the higher-end Civic-based Acura Integra in the US, and they had to save that better engine for that. I know. None of this stuff sounds all that great on paper, but the CRX's smooth gearbox, quality interior, and fun to drive attitude in a practical and affordable package still made it a popular little cruiser. It's one of those cars you just have to drive to understand what all the fuss is about. They really are a treat, and they look like little transformers. <laughs> The first gen CRX was in production for only four years before Honda gave us the much improved second gen at the end of 1987. The body lines were smoother and more modern, just like me after I cool sculpted it. It was shorter than a new mini, and I'm not talking about those blasphemous four door ones. A vertical tinted glass panel was added to the cam back so you could actually see when you were backing up, which is helpful if you don't want to hit stuff. The beam axles were tossed out and now every corner wore an independent double wishbone suspension setup allowing the hood line to drop and improve forward visibility. And the little commuter was starting to look mighty sporty. Honda dropped the Civic name from the car entirely because CRX was now cool enough to strike out on its own. Hey, you've been a Civic CRX for long enough. Go your own way, go my own way. But in a tale as old as time, Japan got all the really sick stuff and we didn't. Our CRX got a metal roof like normal. Japan got a full glass roof. We got a new SI with a 1.6 liter four cylinder making 105 horsepower. Japan got a new SIR with a twin cam 1.6 liter four cylinder and VTEC making 160 horsepower at 7600 RPM. Do manufacturers realize how much this hurts us? 
Maybe they do now since Hana finally gave us a Civic with an R on it. But we had to wait 30 years, you guys. The VTEC B16A motor was the first naturally aspirated engine to claim the 100 horsepower per liter crown and the CRX SIR was the second car to get it after the JDM Integra. We didn't get it in the States until later. And by then, it wasn't even in a CRX. <laughs> That's not to say the stock engines the US got weren't good. The SI's mill was smooth and rev happy with good mid-range torque. Combined with the new fully independent suspension and Honda had the perfect recipe for sport compact car spiciness. Mmm, spicy boys. Second gen CRXs became even bigger key players in all kinds of motorsport from amateur and professional road racing to import drag racing. <laughs> Future American road race superstar Randy Popes took a TC Klein Racing CRX to his first pro championship in 1990. And the race to set quarter mile records with front wheel drive cars was also picking up speed in the early to mid 90s. The first Honda to have to run a parachute and do a 10 second pass was a CRX built by Northern California shop owner Dave Sheet. And Southern California brothers Bergenholtz Racing used a CRX to be the first unibody front wheel drive car to do nines and later became the first import to break the seven second barrier. That's insane. That sounds terrifying. I want to do it. <laughs> For some reason, Honda dropped the CRX from their lineup in 92 before the sport compact scene really blew up. <sighs> uh, uh, what the F? Yeah. Honda replaced the CRX with the target top Del Sol in 1993, two years before Post Malone was born. Hmm? And we finally got the B16 in that car in 1994. It was a fun, quick little Honda, but it was heavier, flexier, and less sporty than the CRX. Tuners and racers just weren't into it, and the Miata had moved in and started stealing Honda's lunch money. <laughs> Instead, JDM Hot Boys bought up used CRXs and threw on lowering springs, flat build baseball caps, and grapefruit size exhaust tips. High school kids and high school teachers both wanted them. Long after it was gone, the CRX appeared in tons of video games, from Sega GT and Need for Speed to Gran Turismo in Grand Theft Auto. The CRX is like a movie that did, you know, decent at the box office, but gained a huge cult following once it went to video. Yeah! I, I, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for tuning in every week. This is the most fun to make these videos, and I'm so glad that you like them. Check out this episode of my other show, Bumper to Bumper. It comes out every Tuesday. Check out this episode of my son Nolan's show, which comes out every Monday. Follow me on Instagram at James Pumphrey. Follow Donut at Donut Media. I love you.